if you look at, and, and this was something uh, written about in the feature about you, Myrna, too, is that there have been a lot of conflicting studies over the years. Uh, some that at first said that those who may be overweight or may be obese, if they are very active, mm -hmm. then they will increase their chances for uh, some kind of a heart disease. Now, more recently, there have been studies that right. will tell you the opposite. How do we make sense of it all? Uh, you have to first look at what BMI is, right? So it's just a measurement, uh, often the weight and height of an individual. So you take their weight um, in pounds, you divide it by their height in inches squared, and multiply it by 703 uh, because it's originally a metric measurement. So you have to look at BMI more as not a diagnostic, but as a screening tool. So there's a lot of flaws there when people think, all right, automatically if I have a BMI that puts me in an overweight or obese category, that automatically means I'm, I'm unhealthy. No, you look at that to delve deeper into, into other uh, health markers that will then give a better insight into, all right, do I have some extra cardiovascular risk? Do I have other issues that I should be looking into um, to, be, to be aware and cognizant of? So, um, there are definitely conflicting studies, but that's what science is. It, it sets out to continuously disprove previous studies to make sure we have the best information. And we've begun to see that BMI is not the best um, tool to be able to have um, more information regarding a, a person's health risk in the future. BMI so, being body mass body index, mass of course. Index, yeah. um, and so, you know, how do you think that we're doing culturally, too, in terms of approaching this discussion of whether someone can be fit and fat? Yeah. Uh, I, I think we're approaching it very well, and just as this cover shows, there's definitely, there's definitely a, uh, a relationship out there and a need for people to see uh, people of all body types being, being active. Now, you have to realize what fitness is. There's a lot of markers for fitness, uh, one of those being you know, cardiovascular health. So respiratory health, you, know, you need those 30 minutes of running or so a day. And this opens up the discussion that, all right, unless I'm in optimal shape, that's the only time I should go out and run. Now we're approaching it of, we're getting more active uh, of all body types, and we're setting each other as a global community on a path to greater health. So I think this is a major step forward. That said, I mean, running isn't for everyone, though, right? It's not. It's not. Um, so, but that doesn't mean activity isn't. So even if they see someone that may be overweight or even of normal weight, and they're going out and being active, that could be a catalyst for someone to find an aerobic activity that's for them, whether that's swimming, whether that's even just walking, whether that's biking and, or, or spinning. There's so much out there that um, encompasses being active as a general population that showing this, this, this running and this awesome model on the cover will spur people on to find what fits them.